on Fresh Gear, it's a massive Mac attack. Think different as the Fresh Gear crew takes on the Mac World Expo in New York City. Steve Jobs was up to his usual trick, unveiling this season's new iMac colors and the revolutionary G4 Cube. Plus, gaming on the Mac hasn't always had its day, but we'll see how gaming is finally starting to arrive on the Macintosh. All that and more, next on Fresh Gear. Welcome to Fresh Gear. This week we're at the Macro Expo in New York City. This huge trade show is dedicated to a single platform, the Macintosh. I'm Jim Lauterbach. And I'm Simi Dodd. Once again, Steve Jobs, Apple CEO, wowed attendees in his keynote speech with details of Apple's newest product. For a company that was floundering a few years ago, Apple definitely made a comeback. And it's due in large part to the iMac and the support of their devoted family. Yeah, the Mac faithful were certainly out in force this week. Let's take a look at some of the highlights of this year's Mac World. Different. Empowering. Super. The attitude at this trade show is definitely different. Cool. Easy. Macintosh owners just love their Mac. Progressive. Creative. There's a feeling of belonging and being part of a community. Opening this year's Mac World Expo was the cult leader himself, Steve Jobs. And as always, he had something new to add to the Macintosh product line. It is a new desktop machine. What is it? We are combining the power of the Power Mac G4, the awesome power of this machine, with the desktop elegance, the silence, and the miniaturization that we learn from doing the iMac to make a whole class of machines. The computer is in an 8-inch cube, and it's suspended in a stunning crystal clear enclosure. There's also a slot load DVD drive, but where is it, you ask? Not only did he announce a new member to the Mac family, but also a revamped mouse and keyboard and some new colors for the iMac. The new mouse now uses IntelliEye technology, and look for iMacs to now come in shape with Sage, Indigo, Ruby, and No. We want Apple to stand at the intersection of art and technology. Apple also showed off a sneak peek of their much-anticipated new operating system, OS X. This new multitasking OS includes a radically enhanced interface called Aqua that packs some pretty cool features. Don't expect OS X to be available until the beginning of next year, but look for a beta version in September. Apple, of course, wasn't the only buzz on the floor. Microsoft, yes, Microsoft, made a presence with their new Office 2001 available for the Mac. Microsoft has, on occasion, not done the best Macintosh products, but those days are absolutely over. And FireWire is steaming up the scene with everything from scanners to CDRWs available with this super-fast 400 megabit standard. The cult of Macintosh is stronger than ever. Both for college, I had Mac in the only quantity, but it was the best OS ever. And judging from this year's show, these Mac enthusiasts are here to stay. There's a community that is like no other. As you can see, everybody is here for one reason, and that's to love Macintosh. Before the keynote address, I got an idea of just how fanatical Apple users can be. I went to the line with people waiting to get in, went to the very first person, asked him what time he got there. Yes? I don't know. 9 a.m., 8 a.m.? 4 a.m. 4 a.m.? Before 4 a.m., like 3.50. Well, you know, i, I got to tell you, the, the keynote was a lot like a Britney Spears concert. I think Steve Jobs, Britney Spears, there's really no difference there in my mind. <laughs> but I was really glad to see that they actually finally replaced the hockey puck. I've been railing against that thing for two years, I finally. Have. i got to find something else to rail about. Now. I know, but didn't you think that they mentioned it at every single opportunity day? He mentioned it at every opportunity that he could? Yeah, over and over and over again. But oh, by the way, new mouse. By the way, come standard with every computer. But even though we had to put up with that, I think it was very nice that every attendee walked out with a new mouse in hand. Are you going to use yours? How are you going to use it? It works with PC. Oh, it does? Yeah, it works with my notebook. I'm so happy to hear that. Yeah. Anyway, coming up, from the simple facelift to the major innovation, we'll take a look at all the newest hardware Apple unveiled at Macworld. And don't forget the software. We'll show you the applications that are making their way to a Macintosh near you, and may show up on your PC as well, when Fresh Year continues from Macworld. 
on the highlights. Now here's a closer look. Think different. That's what Apple wants us to do. And they didn't disappoint in the different factor this year. First, they decided to do a little bit of remodeling to their current line of products. After a lot of complaints, Apple finally retired that hockey puck shaped travesty they've been trying to pass off as a mouse. In its place, they announced the Pro Mouse. It's a sleek and rounded oval that's both comfortable and easy to use. It's quite a step up. It's even innovative. It doesn't have any buttons. Instead, the whole mouse is a button. Press anywhere on the top to click. And no more moving parts either. The Pro Mouse adopts a version of the Intel Eye technology premiered by Microsoft last year. Color was another overhaul. Those tasty iMac flavors have been replaced with funky new colors. The least expensive iMac have dropped from 1000 all the way down to $800 and will come in only Indigo. While the iMac DVDs are available in Indigo and Ruby, and the DV Plus adds stage to the new color screen. The DV Special Edition keeps the popular graphite, but adds a new color, Snow. This all-white iMac looks like a fancy television or appliance, but it sells for an expensive $1,500. Apple also upgraded their G4 lineup, making gigabit Ethernet standard across the line. The two high-end G4s now include dual G4 processors as standard equipment. But unless you're using Photoshop or Final Cut, you'll have to wait until winter, when OS 10 ships, to take advantage of the extra speed of those two G4 chips. And for something new, Apple's biggest announcement this year was the launch of a brand new line of Macs, the G4 Cube. It's a complete G4 system crammed into this tiny 8 by 8 inch space. And clever engineering even removed the fan, which makes it completely silent. The entire contents of the system are all stored right in here in this small 8 by 8 cube. And uh, putting a CD in is great. It's kind of like a toaster. You just pop it into the CD sucker and it pops right out again. On the underside, it's got all the ports you'd expect to see on G4. It's got 10100 Ethernet, FireWire, USB, a modem connection. This is for power. And this is a new type of LCD digital flat panel connector that actually has power, too, so only one cable has to go to it, and these are for audio. And the cool thing about it is how you access the inside. Turn it upside down, hit the little handle right here, pull it up, and now you have access to all the guts of the system. You can upgrade the memory right here, 
And then over here, as I turn it this way, you can add in an Apple Airport card for wireless networking. The G4 Cube will be available in August, starting at $1,800 without a monitor. We can hardly wait to see what Apple comes up with for the next Macworld in January. Our prediction? Products that continue to ask us to think different. Now, hardware is only one side of the story, though. You need software to run on it. And I think, though, that Apple fans are so devoted that they would buy a Mac just for the sake of having one, even if there wasn't a software. Yeah, I think you're right. Some would. But it's a good thing that in the last few years, a lot more software has become available for the Macintosh. It makes it a much more useful platform. I agree. Here's a closer look at some of the software developments announced at this year's show. <laughs> While Apple's much-hyped OS X won't be available until next year, Apple did usher in two consumer applications at Macworld that are available now, iTools and iMovie 2. The original iMovie has been available as a download from Apple's site, and now iMovie 2, a new version of the easy home editing application, will ship with the new iMac TVs, G4s, and G4 Cube. iMovie 2 offers a number of features that weren't available on the original version, including the ability to change the speed and direction of clips. It's very easy to do. Let me show you. I'm going to switch to the timeline mode. I've got this clip of a break dancer. You'll see it playing at the speed at which it was originally shot. Now, if I want to make it faster or slower, I simply use this bar down at the bottom. I'm going to make it a little slower and play it for you. So as you can see, it slowed down quite a bit. Now, if I want to reverse the direction, I just go up to the advanced menu, click on reverse clip direction, and then as I click from the beginning, you'll notice that it's playing backwards. iMovie also improved audio editing and has added more video and titling effects. iMovie 2 will also be available at the end of August for $49. Apple also upgraded iTools, a free one-stop homepage builder for Apple users running Mac OS 9. iTools adds new templates for sharing the digital pictures, iMovies, and other information on the Internet. iTools also includes 20 megabytes of free Internet storage on their iDisk, and more storage is available for an annual fee. Another software announcement came from a surprising source, Microsoft. The new Microsoft Office 2001 delivers a surprisingly strong upgrade to the previous Office Macintosh release. It delivers a host of new features that will make Windows-based Office 2000 users jealous. The project gallery allows you to choose what you want to accomplish, from creating a menu to presentation. Entourage is a brand new application designed to add 10 features like a contact list and calendaring to Outlook Express on the Macintosh. Excel adds in a feature called List Objects that adds a pull-down menu at the top of each column. PowerPoint presentations can now be published as QuickTime movies, but the best feature is the format palette in Word, a tiny window that includes every format option, including font, paragraph, and page, all in single interface. No pricing was available, but Microsoft expects to ship off 2001 in October. Coming up on Press Gear, FireWire is hotter than ever, and we will show you the products that are taking advantage of this speedy technology. And you can't leave music out of the mix. Pump up the jam with these audio add-ons for your Mac.
Fair here at Mac World Expo in New York City. So, Jim, Apple appears to have this reputation for being on the forefront of a lot of breakthrough technologies. I think that it's partly self-inscribed, but I think a lot of people believe that Apple is truly an industry leader. Well, they are a leader. Look at this year. Dual processors on most G4s, gigabit Ethernet on the motherboard. That's totally innovative. Last year, Apple Airport wireless networking. And a couple years ago, they came out with FireWire. Now, that's pretty much standard across the line. Yep. But we haven't seen a lot of FireWire products until this year. Now, this year really was a coming out party for FireWire. Like the Mac fans at this year's Macworld, a hot new standard was also running rampant on the show floor. FireWire was firing up the show with various vendors showing off their products. Everything from CDRWs to scanners to hard drives are becoming available with a FireWire interface. Recently, we reviewed one of Lucy's FireWire products with a pocket drive, portable hard drive. At Macworld, Lucy debuted their new FireWire DVD RAM drive that reads and writes more than 4 gigabytes of data on durable, removable DVD media. The Lucy external FireWire DVD RAM drive is available now for $780. Now, like with C, VFT is also coming out with pocket-sized, high-capacity hard drives. This one's 25 gigs, but they also go up to 30 gigs, and they go all the way down to about 5. It connects via both USB and FireWire, so you have a lot of options. The nice thing about it is, it's very portable. FireWire drives allow you to hot swap easily from one machine to another. Just plug in the drive to any FireWire-enabled computer, PC or Mac, and as long as your system can recognize the file structure, you're ready to access data. The VST FireWire drives are available now and range from $330 to $600. For high-capacity solutions, Micronet comes up with a new buzzword, the storage area network. Their new SAN cube lets up to four Macs, share 450 gigabytes of storage, transfer speeds can be as fast as 33 megabytes per second, and you can even hook a FireWire digital video camera right up to the SAN cube. The 450 gig version will be out by August for $6,000. Not only are storage devices taking advantage of the blazing speeds of FireWire, but scanners are doing the same. Although most FireWire scanners cost $1,000 or more, UMAX has brought FireWire to the average consumer. The Astra 6400 and 6450 are priced at $250 to $300. Both are available now and come bundled with Adobe Photoshop LE. The FireWire standard was first introduced as a way to transfer large amounts of data, like video, to the desktop. But now it's burning up the peripheral market and it's poised to leave SCSI in the dust. A lot of people have really been looking forward to those products and the nice fat pipe that FireWire provides. I think in a few years, we're going to see some amazing stuff down with FireWire. And that speedy connection really lays down the groundwork for all sorts of multimedia applications, like the many we checked out on the show floor. Here's our roundup. Apple has long known that people want to do more than just work on their computers. They want to be entertained. Many recent Mac developments are proof of Apple's continued dedication to multimedia. Audiophiles and newbies alike will appreciate Harman Kardon's sound stick, which consists of a subwoofer and two satellite speakers that house four one-inch transducers. Its futuristic design gets high marks from us and is more than just skin deep. To enjoy the full potential of the sound stick, you really need to have this row of speakers aimed directly at you. In order to do that, Harman Kardon built in an interesting design feature. This steel ring base is adjustable, so you can change the angle at which the speakers are directed at you. So I could even have it at a 90 degree angle, or I could hang the speakers from my wall. One flaw we did notice, though, while the subwoofer features a knob that allows you to lift up the bass, the speakers lack a similar control for volume. But the sound quality was impressive, and at $199, we should hope so. On the MP3 front, iJam introduced its iJ828, a player that had us experiencing station food. Look familiar? Well, there's a good reason for that. The iJam MP3 CD player is essentially the same as the MC Trip, which we showed you a while back. Apart from a few minor cosmetic changes, there's no difference between the two. Okay, maybe there's one. At $149, the iJ828 costs more than the MP Trip, something to remember when you're shopping around. You may also want to keep in mind that there are always new products coming down the pike. We got a glimpse at two. 
The Jukebox 6000 from Archos promises 6 gigabytes of memory in a pocketbook-sized player that can be used for MP3 files or other data. Then there's a new digital audio player from iOmega, which, as you may have guessed, uses the affordable click disc. If you're already set in the player department, Music Matches Jukebox may be of interest. It offers 160 kilobits per second encoding, and there's also a simple but extremely efficient way to organize music files. Best of all, it's free to download. So whether you want to spend several hundred dollars or nothing at all, there are plenty of ways for you to take advantage of your Mac and enhance your multimedia experience. Still to come on fresh here, has Mac Gaming finally arrived? We'll take a look at some of the titles that Apple gamers can look forward to, including a peek at the much anticipated Halo. is usually an afterthought, if a thought at all, for game developers. Yeah, and one of the last game developers writing for the Macintosh, Bungie, got bought by Microsoft. When that happened, a lot of the Mac enthusiasts thought that was it. No more Bungie games for the Mac. But at the keynote, the head of Bungie came out and assured people they were still going to work on Mac games. Yeah, and that's good news for Mac gamers. There was some other stuff Mac gamers would like at this year's Mac World as well. Let's take a look. These days, it seems like PC gamers have all the fun. Newest games require fast 3D graphic chips, 
those chips haven't made it to the Macintosh. Well, now that's all changing. ATI and 3DFX are planning new, fast 3D graphics cards for Mac users. ATI, who makes the chips in most existing Macintosh computers, announced a new graphics card based upon their brand new Radeon graphics processor. It also features a Charisma Transform and Lighting Engine, which should really make 3D games look great. AGP and PCI boards will be available in September for around $280. 3DFX also rolled out new products that bring real power to the Macintosh platform. When the Voodoo 5 shipped for the PC, Mac users felt left out. Well, they shouldn't have because here in Macworld, 3DFX released the Voodoo 5 for the Mac. This is it right here. Now, it's about $30 more than the PC version, primarily because they have the DV connector right here, but it supports Glide, Rave, as well as OpenGL. A lot of good games going on back there that run on here. Now, the Voodoo 4 will also be available for the Mac in a couple of months, and they say they're trying to get it to fit into the new, small G4 Cube. 3DFX will only release PCI versions of the Voodoo 4 and Voodoo 5. Now, theoretically, AGP boards should be faster still, so we hope AGP versions aren't too far behind. The Voodoo 5 5500 is available now for $330. Mac users are going to need great games to take advantage of all that 3D capability. One of the most popular new games, Diablo 2 from Blizzard, debuted for the Macintosh at Macworld Expo. <laughs> This fantasy role-playing game features different characters, quests, and battles, and it is very addicting. Bungie's new Halo game is also earmarked for the Macintosh when it comes out later this year. This first-person adventure game features stunning graphics and a storyline where you got to save the Earth and kill all those nasty aliens. We are intrigued by the demo of Rune, the new game from Gathering of Developers. Room should be available around Halloween. Gamers will still find more games and graphics options for the PC, but the Mac is quickly catching up with both hardware and software. NVIDIA is also going to release the card for the Macintosh, but we didn't see it because they pulled out of the show. Don't stay here. Yeah, Can't like see the so. product if they're not here. Now, one thing that was in full force was Freshware. Yay. Here's the softer side of the Macintosh. It's no surprise that Macworld was teeming with freshware to spruce up your Mac experience. After all, the colors of the iMac just scream, accessorize. Desks were in no short supply. We liked the simplicity of the iStand, but appreciated the details of the iDesk. Unitrap displayed iMac-flavored clocks, page holders, mouse pads, and mini mice. There was even something for clumsy folks. If you've ever spilled a drink on your desktop, you know that beverages and computer equipment just don't mix. This little gadget is designed to help prevent those accidents. It's called a cyber drink holder. Here's how it works. There's a suction cup on the bottom. Place it on your desktop. Push it down. Make sure that suction cup is really in place. Lift open the top. Lift open the little cup holder. Stick your cup in here. Adjust accordingly. And then that thing's not going anywhere. I think about getting one of these to gym. Continuing with the practical theme, Hoodman offers hoods that fasten to your LCDs and shields them from glare. Simple and brilliant freshware. Who could ask for more? The innovative products introduced at this year's Macworld not only gave us a glimpse at Apple's future, they also served notice to the computer industry that Apple is back. PC lovers, watch out. Yeah, I like a lot of what I saw. The G4 Cube looks great. A lot of nice software. I have to say, except for the new iMac at 800 bucks. A little expensive, but great stuff. I think Apple's doing a very good job. Now tell us what you think. Head up to our website at freshgear.com and vote in our poll. Is the math that? Now that's going to be a controversial question. We'll see about that. I'm sure you'll vote. Yeah, I'll vote a couple times. Well, while you're up there, take a look at some of the reviews and other information about all the stuff we found at Macworld, including my new favorite mouse. <laughs> Your favorite. And we always love to hear from you, so drop us an email. The address is freshgear at zdtv.com. That's it for this edition of Fresh Gear from the floor of Macworld. I'm Jimmy Dodd. And I'm Tim Lauderback. Thanks for joining us.